I'm Dr. Erica with Rosie Research. Let's take a look at the pencil versus the pen in space. Now, there's a big joke that people often hear running around circles as they talk about either government waste or just how people problem solve and think and how, you know, Americans spent millions and millions and millions of dollars to create a pen that would write in space and Russians use a pencil. And oh, they're so thrifty and so smart that they use this pencil. But there's a couple problems with the pencil in space. One problem is it's made of wood. Now wood, if you've ever made a campfire to roast marshmallows, burns. You know what the last thing they want in space? A fire. Because if there's a fire in space, where are you going to go? There's nowhere. So you don't want a fire in space. So NASA at one point spent hundreds of dollars, um, it's like $120 per pencil to make a mechanical pencil that didn't have wood, which is a little crazy if you think about it, because that's a lot of money per pencil, but it is better than the regular pencil. Of course, the other problem with pencils is the lead or the graphite they use. If you've ever taken a pencil on a piece of paper and gone really, really hard, you'll notice that you have to blow off some of the lead. There's all this dust in there. And you know what happens in space where there's no gravity? Well, it just sort of goes into the air. And that's not really what you want astronauts breathing, but it also goes into control panels. And lead conducts electricity. So the right size flake in the right size space could short circuit a computer. So there's a lot of big problems with using a pencil in space, and in fact, the Russians don't use a pencil in space. There's also problems with a regular pen, though. Because a pen, have you ever tried to write upside down with a pen? It doesn't work. Because pens use gravity to pull the ink down out of the tip. So if you're writing this way, all my ink is at the bottom, and I can't write anything. So what did they do? Turns out NASA didn't do anything. Fisher did something. They spent a couple million dollars, about two million dollars, so nothing crazy like millions and millions and millions, but a big chunk of money to make a pen that they wanted to write underwater in no gravity, upside down, hot or cold. It was like the ultimate pen. And the way that they did that is they put um, a gas inside the thing. They pressurized their ink. So your ink has some gas here that's pushing everything this way, and then it has the ink, which is actually a special ink that's like a gel until it gets moved by that ballpoint piece of the pen. This solves every problem. We don't have to have the wood, we don't have to have the lead, and we can write in zero gravity with a space pen. NASA gets these pens from Fisher, and the Soviet space program, they also get it from Fisher for a few dollars a pen. So it's not such a big investment. And it's not something that we can all just say, oh, look at that government waste, or oh, I can't believe they would spend it. That's just so silly. Because they used it for a really good purpose. The other thing is, is the Fisher space pen is the whole reason why astronauts on Apollo 11 got back to Earth. So they had to use the pen to turn on a switch, an arming switch in Apollo 11 when it was everything was broken, and they used that pen to help them get back into Earth. So not only does it help astronauts write better and be safer, apparently if your astronaut of your ship is going completely bonkers, it might be able to solve your problem. Hopefully this helps you learn about the great pen debate and stop um, sort of putting forth all of that idea of like, oh, we're wasting all of this money. Hopefully it gives you sort of a peek into what went on. Thanks for learning with us. This is Dr. Erica.